Well, welcome back. Twitter's former security chief is accusing Twitter of, quote, extreme egregious deficiencies related to cybersecurity issues, which put users, shareholders, and national security at risk. Uh, Peter Zatko filed a whistleblower complaint with government agencies last month. It became public yesterday. He says Twitter executives are, quote, not incentivized to accurately detect or report total spam bots on the platform. Twitter responded by saying he was fired in January. Joining me right now is his lawyer. Mr. Zatko's lawyer is the founder and chief disclosure officer at whistleblower aide uh, John Tai. John, great to have you. Thanks very much for being here. Thank you. What can you tell us about this case? Uh, well, Mudge, my client, uh, has a long history uh, at the forefront of uh, security. Um, he worked for Google, for Stripe. He was a senior official at the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. Uh, he won the highest honor available from the Secretary of Defense for his offensive and defensive um, cyber work and research. Uh, and he was forced, <clears throat> he was fired uh, January after uh, trying to tell the Twitter board about the extreme uh, deficiencies inside the company and on the platform. Um, so we have filed disclosures with the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Federal Trade Commission, uh, the Department of Justice. Uh, they're investigating. Well, the, the extreme deficiencies and putting national security at risk, putting user data at risk, this is a very significant and serious charge. What can you tell us about that? Uh, well, unfortunately, there were essentially no controls uh, in place for a very long time. Um, I can't go into all the details uh, from his time at the company, but uh, the disclosure goes into great detail, 84 pages, single space, hundreds of footnotes, dozens of uh, enclosures, documenting how on the issues of privacy, uh, information security, physical security, uh, <clears throat> and uh, integrity of the, the content on the platform, um, essentially the, the company uh, was not doing what it said it was doing. And, and, of course, Elon Musk is also fighting with Twitter because he says they have not been truthful about the number of fake accounts. How does that play into this? Well, this complaint uh, is totally independent from that lawsuit or anything else. Um, Mudge, my client, began raising these concerns as early as December of last year, months before Musk ever uh, started getting involved. Uh, so, so it's possible that these disclosures could affect the litigation in Delaware, but uh, certainly we're never, uh, we've never communicated with Elon Musk. Um, you know, that's that's totally separate from what yeah. Mudge no, is doing. No, I know it's totally separate, but I'm trying to understand Zatko's journey, uh, his motivation. What is he hoping to achieve here? And and along the way. What kind of response was he getting? And I know you're limited in terms of what you can tell us about the actual context here, but what kind of response did he get as he raised his hand over a period of time to say, this is not right, this is actually putting people at risk? Absolutely. Uh, he used every internal channel available before he was fired in January. Uh, and this whistleblower disclosure is really sort of the final uh, effort to uh, keep the promise he made to Jack Dorsey when he was recruited to, to, to get uh, the issues in, on this platform under control. So how does it put users at risk? I mean, what do users need to understand about this? Well, uh, so in July 2020, uh, a couple of teenagers in Florida in their parents' bedrooms hacked into the platform and began tweeting as Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Kim Kardashian, Barack Obama, uh, demanding Bitcoin. Uh, and this was a very humiliating hack. Uh, he was brought in uh, by Jack Dorsey personally to get to the bottom of that and many other issues at the company. Um, he, he made a lot of progress on some things, but uh, was ultimately prevented from um, for, from fixing these problems. And so he is hoping that users, uh, the, the Congress, uh, this is a bipartisan investigation, law enforcement agencies, potentially other governments are able to get the information they need to run investigations, potentially bring enforcement actions, legislate uh, to ensure that users have meaningful privacy, um, that the integrity of the content on the platforms is is protected, um, that it's it's not used to manipulate elections or anything else. Uh, and 
there's generally a lot more understanding that the users need um, to make informed decisions. So ba based on what you have learned, does Twitter have the, uh, have the ability to interfere in elections? Uh, well, I would say over the last decade, we've learned how all kinds of social media platforms um, can, whether deliberately or inadvertently, uh, affect elections, um, spreading of mis and disinformation, but, but also uh, overt manipulation by foreign, foreign agents. Um, that is covered in detail uh, with several specific companies, uh, excuse me, uh, national governments mentioned I I in the disclosure. Uh, I'll also note that... Um, he uh, is protected by all of the the whistleblower anti-retaliation laws, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, the Dodd-Frank Act, uh, federal criminal statutes against whistleblower intimidation, state laws, uh, and whistleblower aid, uh, which you can find at whistleblowerAid.org, O-R-G, uh, uh, is helping him for free unless we win money for him and, and we can use support from your listeners out there. Well, we know what happened right before the 2020 election where Twitter completely censored the Hunter Biden laptop story, uh, which, of course, we reported on. The New York Post broke so much news on that story uh, and Twitter just censored the whole story and anybody on it who was talking about this story. Real quick before you go, uh, John, I want to get your take on what happened happens next. What's the process? Who hears this case? And how long are you expecting this to, uh, to take? Well, uh, we've been in touch with the law enforcement agencies. Uh, they have the disclosure. They're looking at it. Uh, we're in touch with investigators there. Um, we've been meeting with committees of jurisdiction in Congress, the Senate Judiciary Committee, House Energy and Commerce, uh, Senate Intelligence Committee. Um, we, uh, they're taking this very seriously. So uh, we expect uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, ongoing efforts to get to the bottom of this. All right. We'll certainly be following it along the way. John, thanks very much for coming in today. Thank you. All right. John Ty joining us this morning uh, on the whistleblower's uh, claim against Twitter. We'll be right back. Stay with us.